In the previous video, we defined a new GraphQL service called GraphQL1. Now we're going to show how you can test that service using the built-in GraphQL tester that comes with Alpha Anywhere. So I'm going to right click on the service name over here and then say test with GraphIQL. So GraphIQL is the built-in tester and you can either test this in live mode which means that the Alpha Anywhere development server must be turned on or you can use working preview which means that you can test it without having to turn on the Alpha server. So I'm going to test it using working preview over here. So this opens up the Graph IQL tester and this uh, tester has um, uh, various sections here. So first of all on the left hand side we have history which contains all of the previous queries that I've been testing. So I can just sort of close that down. And then on the right hand side we have the documentation explorer which shows us all the different GraphQL queries that the service defines. So here are all the different queries that we can execute. So get category, get many categories, get customer etc. And then we can also look at the mutations. So mutations are queries that modify the data so we can add a category, update categories etc. So the, the schema section here uh, shows us the schema of the GraphQL uh, service. So let's go here and start out by doing a query that returns data from the customer table. So we can go here and we can type in query and then the actual query is going to be get customer and then we can basically go and specify what um, columns from the customer uh, table we'd like to return but we can also specify which particular customer we want to uh, see so we're going to go here and inside parentheses we're going to type in uh, customer ID which is the um, the field that we're going to query on and then I'm going to go here and type in a semicolon and then I'll type in say uh, bollard. So that's the customer that we're going to return and then I'll go here and I'll type in say customer ID, contact name, company name, uh, city and country. We can then go and click the prettify button to reformat that and now we'll go ahead here and execute the query and you can see now that we are returning the data for uh, the customer called Bollard and we're returning these fields from that name. But uh, as you recall from the previous uh, video when we defined the schema for the service there was a children property for the customer table so for each customer we can get a list of the orders so let's go here and type in say orders and now from the orders table we can specify what columns we want so I'll go here and say order ID and then I'll basically go here and say um, um, let's go here and say uh, uh, order date etc so let's go there now and execute this so here we can see that for each um, uh, customer we're getting a list of the orders now let's say that for each order we'd like to see what the order details were so we'll go here and we'll type in order details and then for each order detail we can specify we want the product ID and the quantity so let's go ahead now and run that so you can see now we're seeing the customer then we're seeing the orders and then for this order here are the order details but uh, as you may recall from the previous video where we defined the schema for the service, there was a join in the order uh, details uh, definition that specified that order details was joined to products. So that means that for each order detail we can get the product description from the products table. So let's go here and type in product name and then execute that and so now you can see that we have the product name but we have um, a property name here that looks a little odd so let's go here and give an alias to this um, field here so I'll just go here and type in product name colon and then execute 
and we can see now that we've aliased this uh, field. So we've made a single API call to the endpoint right now, but we've returned data from the customer table, the orders table, and also the uh, order details table. But we can actually do more. So let's go here and give an alias to this entire result. So I'll go there and say Q1 and then execute this. So now basically you can see that our result is coming back uh, in a property called Q1. And then I can take this entire uh, query string over here and duplicate it. So let's go there and duplicate it over there. And now change this from bollard to alf key and we'll call this now Q2. So we'll go ahead and execute this. So here's Q1 which is bollard and then if we scroll down we see there's Q2 which is alf key. So now we've basically made again a single call to our API endpoint but we've returned uh, two different uh, query results in a single API call. Um, returning data for both Bollard and uh, ELFKey. So, uh, so far we basically used an explicit um, value for the uh, customer ID here. In the next video we're going to talk about how you can use uh, variables in your query definition.